this one is also a very significant story and also uh, gets to some of the dangers who are involved. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. From CNN, uh, leaked to their intelligence community's favorite journalist, Natasha Bertrand. Ukraine has cultivated sabotage agents inside of Russia and is giving them drones to stage attacks, sources say. Uh, what you can really read here is they say that Ukraine has cultivated a network of sympathizers and agents inside of Russia working to carry out acts of sabotage against Russian targets, providing them with drones to stage attacks. U.S. officials believe these quote unquote pro-Ukrainian agents inside Russia, a.k.a. intel operatives, carried out the drone attack that targeted the Kremlin earlier in May. And uh, they say that they are not yet quite ready to ascribe the same level of uh, attribution on these residential neighborhood bombing or drone attack in Moscow and then also on the oil refineries in southern Russia. However, they believe that the development of sabotage cells is made up of, quote, a mix of pro-Ukrainian sympathizers, but also operatives well-trained in this kind of warfare uh, by mm -hmm. the intelligence officials. Also, uh, it's kind of interesting that they get to the exact way that they are uh, doing this. A lot of it is uh, not just ideology. A lot of it is just straight up bribery. It says cash works wonders. Uh, one of the European intelligence officials who actually has worked um, in the area says that it is, quote, ripe for smuggling. Um, something the Ukrainians have, quote, been doing for the better part of a decade um, <laughs> and that uh, the Ukraine, the Ukrainian intelligence community and others are uh, very adept at, I guess, let's just say, using the uh, illicit networks that they are well familiar with. Now, uh, obviously, this is uh, these stories only come to light when the CIA and the intelligence community is trying to pull the Ukrainians back. And I think that's why we should always try to remember all of this is controlled. All of this is controlled opposition. You know, everything about Ukraine, anything even remotely critical about Ukraine is always couched in the nicest possible terms of which we will show you my personal favorite example um, in a little bit. This particular one, though, is every time that they start bombing the Crimean Bridge, that they start, uh, you know, attacking Moscow with drones uh, a couple of times you know, uh, blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. That's when the CIA and all of them, the Biden administration too, are put in a very, very difficult spot. I also think it is funny because the, some of the most Ukraine, pro-Ukraine people I see are always defending uh, Ukraine's right to attack Moscow as if that's the argument. It's never, uh, at, it's never somehow able to have the nuance in their heads where someone can say, it was a fool, it's, it is completely fine for countries at war to attack each other. And if they, of course, quote unquote, have the right to. But the externality effects on so said country's allies are something that those allies should calibrate to whether they're good for their interests or not. I really have no idea how people are incapable of separating those two. Nobody's attacking Ukraine's rights to defend itself, only the level of US support and then you know level of US responsibility should, should such an attack trigger an actual counterattack, which would be devastating, would escalate the war. And I don't think anyone, including, of course, the Biden administration and now the CIA, clearly who are link, uh, leaking these stories, Crystal, can even dispute that. Uh, if, if they supported it, then they would keep their mouth shut. They're only leaking it because they want the Ukrainians to stop and they want to keep making it known to all of them. They're like, hey, yeah, we may not slap you on the wrist you know, in person. We're also going to make it known in the public, like we didn't have anything to do with this. This is also probably right. a signal to Russia just to be like, hey, guys, like this one's not on us. So, you know, just make sure okay, yeah, this one is not with our support. Yes. I mean, defending yourself, targeting your enemy, that's all fair bounds. Targeting mm -hmm. residential apartment buildings is another matter. It's not acceptable when, when Russia does it. It's not acceptable when Ukraine does it. Um, there was also, of course, in this article, Sagar, the typical language about like, well, it was probably Ukrainians in Russia, yes. but right. Zelensky didn't know anything about it. They say, who exactly is controlling these assets? Is murky. U.S. officials believe elements within Ukraine's intelligence community are involved. Ukrainian President Zelensky has set general parameters for what his intelligence security services are allowed to do, two of the sources said, but not every operation requires sign off. So again, trying to give him a little bit of distance from this operation, which is just like every single report without mm -hmm. fail includes very similar language to this. But um, they also have some uh, intel here about the way that the U.S. feels about this, at least the way the U.S. wants to tell CNN they feel about it. 
They say publicly senior U.S. officials have condemned the strikes inside Russia, warning of the potential for an escalation of the war. Those are the concerns, you know, that we have been sharing and continue to have. But speaking privately to CNN, U.S. and Western officials said they believe the cross-border attacks are a smart military strategy mm. that could divert Russian resources to protecting its own territory as Ukraine gears up for a major counteroffensive. Now, it might be true that this is a smart strategy if you are just looking at it from the Ukrainian perspective of, you know, distracting Russia, forcing them to have to defend their own population and not concentrate all of their resources on the battlefield to thwart this coming counteroffensive that appears to now have begun. But what about our interest in this? What about yes. trying to maintain, you know, trying to mitigate any possibility of escalation? The fact that you have U.S. officials signaling this, I mean, that shows you and it kind of proves Russia's point, too, that we are tacitly backing mm -hmm. and accepting these type of very dangerous and potentially escalatory operations within Russia's borders certainly gives them fodder to feel like, oh, yeah, the U.S. is cool with this. They've given the Ukrainians tacit approval and, you know, wouldn't be shocked if there's U.S. resources involved here. Yeah. I mean, I always just point back to when I remember the fake story about Russian bounties back in uh, mm -hmm. the Trump era. Completely fake mm -hmm. story, by the way. But when that right. happened, you had U.S. senators and other U.S. officials saying, OK, now we need to kill Russians. I mean, look, Russia's the same. They're not all that different from us. Um, why wouldn't they feel the exact same way? Um, and that was with just tacit support. So, you know, listen, what goes around can come around. And none of this is an endorsement. It's just a reality. Other people, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So every action that you take should always be calibrated and, and done in such a way that we understand exactly what may, might be coming our way. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just wanna give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only, for you.